Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to a high level best of five. Today we have Classic here in the top right spawning as our blue Protoss player. And in the bottom left as a red Terran playing for the Shopify Rebellion. It is Beyond. Indeed it is my dear friend. Beyond versus Classic. I figure I want to have a look at some uh, Beyond games against Protoss. As I played a series against Beyond just the other day and got absolutely slaughtered. There's nothing uh, nothing better than getting absolutely slaughtered by someone and then seeing them, you know, either slaughter other Protoss players or losing to Protoss players. Either way, it's a win-win. Um, or I'll feel good about myself, like, hey, I lost just like Classic did. Or uh, Classic shows me a way how to beat him. So truly a win-win personally for me and hopefully also a win-win for you guys as so you get to see some high-level Terran versus Protoss over here. Now, we do have that... Uh, Cheeky little build order coming out of Classic with a fast salad. Not sure if this is a fake or if this is a real one. It does feel real because this Nexus is going to be quite late. We'll go down at 21 supply. And the pylon will be followed up here. Or will be followed up with a pylon. Cheeky little opener. I wonder if you can get a second gas actually before this finishes. This was a complete non-scout out of Classic, so... Fairly interesting. Wow, Beyond at the same time opening up with a tech lap first here. This is an extremely uncommon build order out of Beyond. I've actually, I can't recall seeing this. We've seen a lot of Marine into Marauder. I've seen quite some uh, Reaper into Marauder out of Beyond, but straight Marauder into Marauder. This I haven't seen before. And this is actually a really good opener for him against the particular build that Classic is doing here. That fast Zalad is just going to get blasted by the concussive shells. If the Adept shows up at the same time, that Adept might be in a little bit of trouble as well. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what will end up happening here. Spion starts moving across the map. Might accidentally miss this Zalad here in the early game. Zalad will run by. Might delay the command center for a little bit. So the Adept now shades right on top of these uh, on top of these Marauders. The Zalad wanted to join the fight and then realized, wait a second, that's probably not the most wisest plan here. The follow-up for Classic is going to be an Oracle. Or at least a Stargate. I assume it's going to be an Oracle. As well as a Battery. Battery is still a couple of seconds away from finishing. As these two first Marauders are now making their way across the map. I'm so curious how Bion would have played this. If he just would have gotten scouted. That sounds like a terrible situation. But Bion doesn't really seem to care. He's moving across the map. He's getting a little bit of damage in. Managed to take out one Adept so far. And now we'll be following this up with a 3 Rex build order. So... A 3 Rex build as a follow-up onto this. Wait, what in the world is this? This ain't no standard 3 Rex. There's no second tech lab. There is a really fast eBay as well. This almost feels like a, a trick. Is he going to rush into plus one here? Or what exactly is the plan? I think he's going to get really quick stim. And this is a completely different build than any of the 3 Rexes I've seen before in my life. Not so sure if I like it or if I dislike it. I'm not even sure if if Bion is planning on actually going through with this. If he's planning on attacking with it. Or if he's just going to sit home and do absolutely nothing. But usually you go with Stim and Combat Shield at around the 5 minute mark. And you play with double tech laps. This time Bion is playing with a single tech lap. And just Stim. Stim is finishing really early on in the game. Now Classic will scout the fact that there's no second tech lap. We'll be a little bit confused by that. Hasn't spotted the factory quite yet. Immortal is on the way out. As we are also seeing a third base. As well as a robotics bay here. Coming out of Classic. He's playing Phoenix Colossus. But rather than building Phoenixes. He's just building a single Oracle. And I think he's looking pretty darn good here. I think he's looking pretty darn good. If he can hold this base. That is. If he loses this base. And this position gets broken. He might accidentally die. But... Without combat shield, marines aren't that powerful. If one of these batteries finishes up, that would be of huge benefit to him. Oh, here comes Bion. Does he want to stim? Does he want to engage? Yes, he does. Here he goes. One marauder goes down. No cancel on that first battery. Second battery does get cancelled as this stim is about to end. I think that Classic will be capable of holding this third base. And now should really kind of put the pedal to the metal uh, eco-wise. Start Chrono boosting out a couple of these workers and, and kind of take it from there. We have another Adept Shade here chasing this little, this little army. The Oracle is still alive. 
like I said, this is Phoenix Colossi without the Phoenix. Um, <laughs> so the the downside of that here for Classic... Oh, hold that thought. No, keeps Oracle alive. The downside here for Classic is that he can't really easily track those uh, medevacs and it's difficult to deal with drops perhaps but the upside is is that he he was allowed to build a very fast third base he has a powerful army and if it's going to be a straight up engagement i actually really like classic's position here yes if Bion starts dropping that could be trouble but if Bion doesn't start dropping it might be trouble for Bion here and, and classic might be in a good spot something that we've seen in the past by the way is rather than going into phoenixes is people opening up with void rays instead so they'll build like a single void ray and kind of just leave it in the dead space after an oracle start it's just an interesting thought that you know to keep in mind Ooh, follows this up with blink rather than charge so this is completely different than anything i've seen before and i am really curious as to how classic is, is planning on on playing this one out oh there come the stalkers we'll try to connect with one of the medevacs these marines do need to pop back down here on the ground no revelation currently active as the drop continues on in towards the main base is there anything ready there to deal with it the answer for now is going to be no there's no force either here by the way this is a uh, this is almost an all-in coming out of classic it almost feels like an all-in like a a phoenix a phoenix colossus or sorry a blink colossus all in after an oracle really weird opener I can't quite recall the last time i saw this I actually can't recall at all ever seeing this before colossi is trying to help out here defend five workers have gone down good start for beyond this is the issue if you don't have phoenixes you really don't have any catch whatsoever to deal with these medevacs and another drop here heading in towards the natural also dealing a little bit of damage colossi will show up and deal with it at the same time beyond three groups here just bouncing in and out of bases dealing a crap ton of damage this medevac boosting in towards the main base as well as 10 11 workers have fallen already battery went down there look at this just picking up going into the main base saying hey where's your catch buddy do you have anything to deal with me the answer is no one phoenix now pops Colossi goes down against these Marauders, though. Where's the rest of the reinforcements? All at home. There's a bunch of tanks there. A lot of units have gone down on the side of Bion. He did manage to kill a crap ton of workers as well, but he isn't mining from his own third base yet. So, yes, he is up in supply. He is up in economy. He's up in upgrades as well, but he needs to be careful in the defense. Two tanks. Is that going to be enough? Third tank is definitely going to help out. There's no charge. There's no Archons, but there are two Immortals. There are two well there's one colossi there's also a single phoenix but without the ability to lift anything as it's now completely out of energy does classic want to continue pushing on or is he done with this misses his revelation completely hits two SEVs. now sees this army here comes a push no yes maybe i don't know prism on the way towards the main base still no forge here oh no sorry double forges for classic there's no upgrades being researched yet the oracle does get a couple of kills here and the prism makes its way towards the main base charge however not quite done yet only 25 percent done at this point so yeah these zealots should not be capable of doing anything instead we see a an adept warp in that is uncommon that is extremely uncommon especially given the fact that plus one hasn't finished yet so I'm not so sure what you're planning on doing with these adapts, but it seems extremely odd. You have a move out here coming out of beyond as this prism makes its way towards the main base. Turret will help out against the prism. And warpins are simply not possible because there's no charge lot available. Don't really want to warp in stalkers here aggressively in a prism. That's the second colossi. It's gonna get well. Where is it going? Being rallied towards the third base. Beyond is moving into that direction right now. As charge is getting closer and closer to finishing up. Are there any ghosts out yet? No, not quite. Uh-oh, there goes the first Colossi. We all get sniped immediately here at the start of this uh, of this fight. Just right away going down. That, that must be extremely frustrating here for, uh, for Classic. Because without that loss, he might be in a playable position. But now I'm not so sure anymore. Uh-oh. Here comes the attack charge. Still not done. Tanks are targeting. Well, what are they targeting? I'm not so sure. Bion is uh, dealing a lot of damage. Ten workers being killed once more. Does pick up and go in towards the main base. Blink is available, but only three stalkers. This is a massive Artosa spine, and there is a Tesla spine to back it up, but only for these two gateways. Stalkers being warped right into the face of danger, and uh, Classic wanted to laugh in the face of danger, but danger bit his head off, and was the one smiling in the end. 
tank will siege up here. There's no medevacs to, to give any sustain to this army, but I don't think it's quite necessary as this base is going to end up falling. Another Colossi will go down as well, and I think Vian is taking game number one here on Royal Blood after a fantastic sequence of dropping, picking up, and microing, taking uh, the first game here. Fantastic stuff. Absolute masterclass there of uh, abusing the lack of phoenixes there. This is why we don't really see this. You could be saying, well, the phoenixes are expensive in gas. They delay your follow-up attack. But they fulfill such a, a useful role in the Protoss army in those cases that um, they're almost a necessity here. Freaking loved how Beyond played that, though. Just he realized, you know, he, he looked at that situation. I was like, what's what's different here? Okay, there's no phoenixes. How am I going to abuse this? And rather than doing big drops into the main and then an attack somewhere else, he said, hey, I'm going to do a small drop here. I'm going to do a small drop here. Usually phoenixes could take care of that, but this time it was very different. He had to send big portions of his army, specifically Colossi there to deal with it. Because if you're opening Stargate into Colossi, your gateway units have upgrades extremely late. Um, they're going to have slow blink, late charge uh, glaive adept is not even really a thing so let's not even discuss that and it means that you basically need those big colossi units in order to deal with it that's why you usually get the phoenixes phoenixes deal with one side of the army and then the the, the ones that are flying and then the colossi deal with everything on the ground so uh, you don't really have to split your army the moment you're forced into splitting your army when you're playing phoenix colossi and your gateway units don't have their twilight upgrades yet life just becomes extremely difficult and that's what we what we witnessed here that's what we saw happen in that first game just phenomenal game really this is the type of game i think that if you're a terran player you look and it's like man i'm never going to be capable of doing it but it isn't so much about the speed there although the speed uh, of beyond was excellent it was the the decision making the analysis of the situation and realizing what was going on that in my mind was the more impressive part because it it can be a bit much it can be difficult to, to to see the weakness in your opponent's build especially if it's such an uncommon build as what we saw classic play just now so yeah i'm i'm impressed by beyond's ability to make these snap calls that always seem to be correct and maybe it shouldn't surprise me because beyond is i think the player with the highest amount of games in the past year year and a half um, especially in korea i think he has played just simply the most games and uh, those games often lead to a whole lot better decision making and that was clear and just having a lot of experience in many different scenarios like ladder scenarios mainly beyond loves playing ladder he's, a, he's an actual ladder beast similar to how max Pax is such a, a ladder beast in the european region you know these guys they play a lot they also actually practice with each other sometimes yeah, the, the honor of sitting on in, into some of these pract practice sessions always really fun to watch it's quite close uh, closely matched evenly matched these two guys all right adept shades in i think this was a mistake here out of classic blindly went in and is going to get punished by that uh, first hellion what is this going to be it seems to me like this could be a cyclone medevac build here um, where you open up meta with a medevac then pop a couple of marines out of that barracks and get into a cyclone as a follow-up this can hit extremely hard. I'm curious to see how Classic is planning on dealing with this. Uh, we have a fast Robo for now. Follow up with a Stalker. And no second Phoenix as of yet. Second Gate is popping out. Indeed, that's what's what it's going to be. So um, we'll see this drop heading out, basically. Wanting to just trade with the Adepts, maybe with the Stalker. And then the Cyclone will come as a follow up. So just something to keep in mind. This is a, a build that, that Beyond commonly does. Ooh, he's going back home? Wait, he cancelled the cycle. Wait, he... Huh? That is an odd change of plan there, wasn't it? Because he was definitely heading out for what I said that he was heading out for. And now, a complete change of plans. Raven instantly. I think this had some real potential. There was no battery, no immortal on the way, no nothing. Okay. I guess, I guess this is how... How Beyond wants to play it out right now. Still moving across the map with a couple of these marines. That's eight marines, if I'm not mistaken. No, that's nine marines. I was mistaken. And it's just hunting for something. Raven does pop out here, and I think it's time for the extra barracks. No, it's a what? Huh. Very 
unique decision making here. I, I'm not familiar with this. Actually locks onto to the wrong Phoenix. Could have definitely killed the other Phoenix with his uh, Cyclone. Messes up a little bit there. Okay, I, I'm completely unfamiliar with this particular build order. And not, not just because of the supply block that we're witnessing right now. This is a... A double Raven opener against a Phoenix Colossi start. Now, I've seen a lot of build orders, but this is... This is hitting hard. I've never seen something like this. What? Double Raven is actually a thing that we've kind of seen become a little more popular after the latest patch. But not against Phoenix. Phoenix is the hard counter to the Raven. His response to scouting Phoenixes was to build two Ravens. This is, this is unheard of. This is absolutely unheard of. Classic, in the meanwhile, is uh, just popping out a couple of Phoenixes here. He's making sure he gets a high work account. Wouldn't completely surprise me if he adds a really quick fort base. This is something he has done in the past when scouting a quick triple CC, which he is aware of. He knows that triple CC is here. It's a nice spread of these pylons as well. As the probes move towards watchtowers. Twilight Council and a fort are the most likely follow-ups here. And then the question is going to be, when is the fort going to go down? And... I am honestly not so sure what the answer is going to be. Cheeky little scout here. There was no observer. Wait, why did he... What? Why did he scan his own main base? That must have been a misclick, right? I think he wanted to start combat shield. Which has the C hotkey. Just as scan is also the C hotkey. That has happened to me in the past as well. That has happened to me in the past. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Of course, he has the ravens for detection. If he really thought there was an observer there, he could have just sent a raven over. Four phoenixes coming out. I'm sorry, four phoenixes are out. Now a fifth one joins in as well. Charge not quite done yet. As Pion is making his way across the map. With those double ravens. How many interference? You get interference. Like four units soon. So I guess you have a long timing against against Colossi openers. Is that the plan here? This is, a, this, this is something I actually have never seen before. This is really wild though. And I kind of like it. If you can keep it hidden as well. The fact that you have double ravens. That would be huge. Because if Templar Archives gets built and two Templars pop, then, well, life's just going to suck for Beyond. But for now, maybe a 1-1 one, one timing? Combat shield, Stin? For, for interference matrices? Let's go? Is that the plan here? I think it's the plan. Alright, let's do it. I'm personally really looking forward to this. Double Forge is on the way, Fort base as well here for Classic, as he starts his first prism. I say his first prism, like, there's going to be more, and I know Classic, so yes, there's definitely going to be more. He always builds more than one Prism. If the first one dies, he gets a second one. If the second one dies, he gets a third. If the third one dies, he probably lost the game, because that's uh, not great, losing three Prisms. But he'll, if he has time, he'll rebuild it as well, 100%. Here we go. Classic feeling comfortable uh, in this position. I'm surprised by that. Here come the Interference Matrix as one gets hit. And this army is being pushed back completely. Phoenix is not being taken out, though. Two of them survive with hardly any HP. The Ravens get jumped upon. That was so close. That was such a clutch recall as well. If that recall hadn't gone down, I actually think Classic is going to end up losing every single one of those Colossi and probably straight up loses to the follow-up push. What a weird, weird build order. But what a cool type of all-in out of Beyond that isn't all-in at all because he has two two behind this. He has a fast forward base as well. Obviously, he would have loved to do a little bit more, but despite it failing, he's still in a playable position. He can still go into a, a pretty normal mid to late game. Triple Ghoster on the way. The Ghost Academy has finished up. Here come the Zealots, though, and this is going to be an issue. There's no... No, there's one turret in the main base. Do we have... Uh, no, we don't have Prism Speed. I always got to make sure that it ain't there. What an absolutely bonkers game so far. Oh, here we go. Bum, bum, be dum. Hello, guys. I have a surprise for you. Zip. Face mode? No, just drops four. Drops four. Does he want to set up? Start flying in towards the natural. That's going to be the next goal here. Beyond has some ghosts. Will not be using them quite yet. As now it's Classic's uh, turn to have a good time. Because I've got a feeling that you'll need to hit some really good EMPs if you want to win this game. There's no prism aggressively with this push. Beyond moving forward. 
tries to get something done will not quite get it eight scvs here going down once again more zealots heading in towards the main base that's a lot of supply that's being tied up into the main base to chase this single prism hop 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 classic micron like an absolute machine over there it's a bit of cash in the bank would not mind if he spends that but he has the 10 gateways has the double robos and is getting the double upgrades um as well behind this so is setting up for a very very solid late stage of the mid game uh i don't want to say late game yet because i don't really think we're there don't have a dark shrine don't have any lips coming in yet there is a second prism out right now we do not have prism speed yet i think this would be a fine upgrade to go for at this moment as this bad boy is starting to move into position to perhaps um head in towards the natural i guess uh, plus two armor starts no plus three attack starts here quick little cancel there out of beyond and restarts it as this prism now moving in towards the third base at the same time a prism wait this was an orbital that was an orbital and four zealots will land over there four zealots towards the third warp in towards the main base these units are really bruised up they've been bruised and battered around oi 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 this prism uh, handles these two with care at least so that is nice there's another prism on the right side Pian is kind of being torn apart here by these two prisms, having a very difficult time dealing with this. As more and more disruptors are out on the way, bringing the total soon up to six. No Dark Shrine quite yet. This classic is still trying to get some damage in here. Here we go. More zealots heading in. And here come the disruptors. I don't think Bion is paying attention. Bion does not see this army. Classic does not see this army, though. So we have a... Well... Could have been a base trade, but Beyond decides to engage into this. Is going to catch all of those Colossi. Catches one of them at least. Here come the Disruptor shots. That's a good one. That's a good one. And that is another good one as well. And that is pretty decent too. Classic hitting Disruptor shot after Disruptor shot. Fob before plus two weapons finished up. But it doesn't even matter if all your Purification Novas end up hitting. Here comes another big warp in towards the main base. This fourth base hasn't seen any action in well, the past uh, three minutes or so. And here is Classic moving forward with one Purification Nova available. Does get sniped. Second one will not quite get sniped. Nice control. So a couple more SCVs will go down here. 134 supply against 102. As this person still alive. GG gets called as Classic ties up the series. One to one. We seem to be having an uh, enjoyable little series on our hands here. So the score is now all tied up. Classic once again opening without a scout here in the early game. I don't even think I need to mention it for Bion. Can't quite recall the last time Bion scouted in any matchup in, in general. So he definitely is a... He's someone that every now and again dies against the proxy gate. Against a... Uh, you know, some early game cheese. Could struggle against someone like Hero. But Classic prefers the greedy approach himself as well. Rather than being aggressive. Next is before core at the 20 supply. The question is, is it going to be a 19 core as well? Does seem to be the case. 19 Nexus, 19 Core, no scout. A classic build order here. We'll have to wait and see what the follow up will be, but I do like this as a start. We'll, of course, still go into that second gas and island on the low ground, most likely eventually. Uh, actually, pretty late with that probe downstairs, but I'll forgive him. Marine into factory. So, this is often considered to be the greediest of build orders when it comes to the Terran. It's a no scout. Wait, did he cancel the Marine? Okay, this is. I, I have no words for this particular build order. This is, this is way more than just the greediest build order. This is insane. So, he skips his first Marine to get a quicker factory and to keep a little bit of money spare, allowing himself to get a fast second refinery as well. Oh, wow. Beyond. Would you look at that? Just skipping that first marine. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this. This is, of, of course, a reaction, a response to Classic not scouting here and beyond seeing that, saying, hey, if you're not going to scout, why am I getting my first marine? There's no need for that. Uh, we'll open up with a, a Hellion into an insanely fast starboard here. Okay, now we're talking. Double marines as well coming out. I'm looking forward to this. Is it going to be what he wanted to play last game? Or what he tried to play? Yeah, the Cyclone build. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I think it is. We do have that tech lab coming out right now. There is a Phoenix on the way for a classic. 
So all of this is lining up quite nicely for beyond. Ooh. Adept actually is deciding to finish up here. And that is a little bit scary. It's going to take a bit of hull damage. Not all that much, well, actually. Decent chunk of hull damage there. Second Adept, not here. Third unit is on the way. It's going to be a Stalker. And we see the Medevac as well as the Cyclone start now. I mean, it's going to be a, an 8 Marine drop here with a, a Rally Cyclone behind it. The car is out. And I'm not talking about the Arctic Monkeys album. But this Hellion is uh, just out and about. Just having a blast. Popping around. Seeing if it can find anything. Any any tips. Any hints as to what the tech of his opponent is. This is a really scary push, by the way. I think, I think people are really underestimate this. Uh, they see eight marines and a cyclone, they're like, mm, how scary is it really? And the thing is, is that when you're playing uh, what Classic is playing here, a, a Phoenix opener, you don't usually want to get a really quick battery because things just aren't so scary when you have those Phoenixes out, when you have a bunch of gateway units. It's going to end up losing this Stalker pretty much for free. So the Medevac with the eight Marines drops in towards the main base, immediately targets down this pylon as well. Classic now actually starting to be in a little bit of trouble, will not be capable of warping in, well, much more, just has one gate remaining. That Adept is going to get targeted down. This uh, Phoenix in a little bit of trouble, maybe, yes. This Adept goes down, nice little lift here. Saving the Phoenix with the battery as well as uh, denying this Cyclone from dealing all that much damage. This has been a fantastic start though for Beyond. Would you look at that? Absolutely brilliant control here. Follows it up with a Raven and a second Barracks already. So is planning on going into a 3 Rex follow-up, which is actually quite rare. We don't... I want to say that this type of 1-1-1 push often gets followed with a triple CC. And not seeing that happen here... Is, is kind of odd. Now, I'm loving the choice for a Raven, don't get me wrong. Especially if you know you're playing against Phoenix Colossi. If this wasn't a Raven, the three Rex follow-up wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But with the Raven, all of a sudden, yeah, I I kind of dig it. I can see this being a, a, valid, a valid response to what Classic is doing here. I completely like this. Yeah, I'm okay. Two tanks, man, he has a lot of expensive units right now. Look at that two tanks, a medevac, a cyclone, and a raven. They walk in a protos base and they siege up and win the game. I don't actually think that moving out at this point is the correct call though, so I hope he decides to stay at home, beyond that is. Because without stim, without combat shield, I don't think you're gonna have such a, a great fight. The main power of this army really comes from having a higher tank count and the ability to interference matrix to colossi. So you kind of want to hit at that, that sweet spot timing where you have two interference matrixes and your opponent only has two colossi. I think if you manage to hit that spot, you're going to be you're going to be great in any fight. I'm 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 afraid for Beyond here because he doesn't have stim. He sees the second colossi moving forward right now. There is no thermal lens yet. That means that this position is technically safe as the tanks will be capable of holding it. Third CC does get built behind it. As fourth and fifth barracks also get added on. This is a slow leapfrogging motion. But once Thermal Lance finishes up, the battery in combination with the Colossi is going to be capable of poking at Marines. And that is really scary. The one thing that, that Bion has going for himself here is that there's no vision of his army. There's no oracle for revelation. There are no observers nearby. And even if there were observers nearby, we have the Raven to deal with that. Now, Third Colossus is about to pop out as these uh, tanks really slowly, right? This this, need, this is a careful process. Need to start uh, chipping away over here. Now we see Classic moving in. Raven only gets a single interference matrix off. Triple lifts here with those Phoenixes. Means that the ground force gets completely obliterated here as the tanks were in the air. No combat shield on those Marines. Man, those Colossi went even harder than they usually would. And I think that Bion might have just lost the game after a fabulous early game. Just not waiting long enough, I think. Just being too aggressive, a little bit too aggressive. Look at this. There was no Twilight, no Forge. Classic was all in on this defense. If he hadn't completely slaughtered his army, he would have been in a terrible spot. Um, and it kind of shows as well, because even in this case, yes, the game is, is probably over in, in Classic's favor, but 
one one upgrades are gonna be done like the tank count is still kind of okay despite losing three to four tanks already imagine if he just would have started moving out at this point with six tanks a raven and combat shield plus one upgrade basically the entire works you just have so many tanks it would be impossible to engage into without charge without having an archon count and these were the things that classic simply could not afford i i appreciated what beyond tried to do but it didn't work out and now he's in a in, well quite frankly a pretty awful position his opponent is on six gas already he's taking a fourth base beyond is barely setting up his own third base yes he's going to be down an entire base and the moment this bad boy finishes up, we have a good worker count as well for Classic. Sometimes you see these forward bases with like 66 or even like 63, 64 workers. That's not the case here. He already has 70 and he can probably saturate it by getting a couple of extra workers as well. Like three, four extra workers. You're looking at 74, 75 workers. Sick eco here for the Protoss player. Colossi count is complete. Second row will can be added. Was that a recall I heard? Okay, yeah. And the prism is alive as well. Even if that prism wasn't alive, you can just rebuild a new one. It's not much of an issue. The question I have right now is, do you want to add disruptors and go for a kind of slow mid game? Or do you just want to go for a massive push here with 1-1 one, one if you're classic? You know, you're flying with the prism somewhere and you'll take it from there. Do have the gravitic drive coming in here. The increased movement speed for prisms and charge finishing up. So I think we will be seeing a scent here. I do believe so. If I were classic, I'd definitely be trying to move on the map, have a little bit of a uh, double, double counter or double pressure going on here. Maybe a prism to the main, maybe a prism into our natural, then into the main. Lots of options available. Gateway count is at nine, 10, is at 10. It's a good gateway count. Fifth base on the way as well. So classic is saying, hey, I have the, the facilities to reproduce my army. I have two robos, 10 gateways. I am going to be up two bases. I want to trade right now. Even if my trade isn't perfect, I'm going to have more income and good enough production where if, as long as I don't completely get blasted here, I'll probably be fine. And there's a decent chance he just straight up wins with this game as the Archons tank a lot of damage here. No ghost available quite yet. Ghost Academy has finished up, but the boys are not out quite yet. The boys with the sniper rifles. GG gets called as classic with game number three here and putting himself on match point. Here we have our first game in which classic decides it's worthy of his time to scout around. See if anything uh, odd is happening here. Vian opens up with a uh, single gas build order once again. I feel like we've really seen the double gas kind of make take a nosedive when it comes to uh, frequency of being played used to be very popular and just a little while ago but nowadays just not the build anymore that's for sure As this probe makes its way out across the map we'll get the block here uh, on his opponent's natural but we unpull a second SEV or is he just going to be happy with this as a start I think he's just going to be okay for now does seem to be the case CC goes down 142 that's 3, 4, 4 and a half maybe 5 seconds delayed as a reactor will be the follow-up add-on here on that barracks, which means that the factory will be delayed in comparison to last game. It's going to be a 12, 13 second delay on that factory, which means the initial Hellion will be slower, but your first two Marines are a significant amount faster. This is often considered a safer build for Terran players. Beyond someone that loves skipping the bunker as well, by the way, when playing builds like this, does not feel it's necessary to actually get it. Um, and just relying on his marine micro. Oh, look at that. That is a build order. That is a triple CC right here. It's going to be... Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. Well, quick little triple CC here coming out of beyond. Adding in that next barracks as well immediately. Oh god, I love this build order so much. It is so darn powerful. That's... Uh, We'll have to see how exactly he's planning on following it up. Sometimes I've seen him get a really quick eBay with this as well. Just kind of push out those 1-1 uh, one, one upgrades. That doesn't quite seem to be the case here, though. Of course, still wants to get that orbital command on the natural first. Yep, it's going to be a third barracks for now. It's 
couple of uh, marines already are being rallied in towards the main base if any of these first units is a stalker like the first or the second this could be really tricky for Bion. but it's not the case and thus uh, Bion is feeling pretty okay about all of this sends down these two SEVs and starts the mining process here we have a tech lab on the way oh let's be really careful that attack is not allowed to see anything whatsoever second gateway on the way look at this classic is playing it safe he remembers what happened last time he's like that ain't happening again to me uh, double adept plus stalker are moving out across the map right now they feel comfortable enough to do so and we'll be putting on a little bit of pressure here on his opponent four marines at a time and here comes the stalker this is potentially an issue here for beyond who is microing this? Or, well, he's A moving on the Stalker. Forcing his opponent to micro. I think you can turn around with the two Adepts here, no? Surely. Yeah, there we go. Um, starts taking out Marines at a pretty high pace. More Marines are moving in forward right now. I think with some slightly better target fire, one or two more Marines could have actually died here. Uh, we do end this uh, little interaction with, I think, three or four Marines killed. I want to say it's four Marines killed, but... Yeah, four Marines killed right now factory on the way as well and we have an ebay second gas third gas the funny thing with a build order like this the one that beyond is playing here is that the the starport is still pretty quick right this is this is not slow at all by, by any stretch of the imagination now he has a, a lower marine count than he ideally would want but yeah it's going to be out on out and about on the map pretty soon Look how late this third is going to be here. I'm not quite sure why we're seeing an Immortal, honestly. I think that's such a huge error. Just a misunderstanding of what build he's playing against. Like, against the triples, you see, you don't need an Immortal. You just need a quick Colossi and you're fine. Because the initial units of the Terran will consist of pure Marine. So, yeah, like an Immortal is nice to have. Two Immortals is really pushing it. Nah, this is not it. Also more Stalkers. I think Classic here is planning on going for like a single Colossi push or even just a push without any Colossi trying to deny his opponent's third base. I, I just don't really see this happen. I <sighs> This is such a risky move out out of out of Classic. Like if it works but like what what, what could he do here? kill a couple of of marines is that the plan but I, I don't think that's enough i just don't believe that that is going to be enough another supply block here for beyond who's stuck at 93 93 i've seen him before already as well being supply block once or twice in this game kind of sloppy out of him honestly he is still up in workers and his infrastructure is being added right now that means that his supply is going to rapidly start increasing while also capable of uh, continuing upgrades this feels a whole lot like a two base all-in. I am not entirely sure if this is correct. Like if this is if this is an ethical build order that, that Classic is, is playing here. Is it? We have six. Six more gateways coming out. Two more gateways. Oh, yeah. We have eight gate. Forge Twilight. The problem at this point is that I don't even really see Classic making his way across the map. Like, how is he dreaming of doing that? He's throwing down a Twilight behind this. Yeah, Forge as well. Double Forge. Okay, wait, what? So it felt like his setup here was for an all-in, then realized that he couldn't go for it, and now he's following this up with, with Charge and Double Forge. He's gonna get pulled back here. Um, we have this uh, recall being used practically immediately. One, two, three sentries. And well, two sentries get taken out, so does one Immortal. And the drop continues. There's no real way of catching these medevacs except with the phoenixes. But those phoenixes are massively out of position. Beyond this pushes forward, it's gonna win the game straight up. No, this is ridiculous. This was such a weird game. Out of classic. I, I love the build out of Beyond, but classic here played played something that was fairly mediocre in my mind. So, I yeah, I don't know. Like all the responses, all the calls that he made this game have been fairly poor. I, I think it's really the, the only conclusion we can get to here is just legitimately poor decision making, bad response against what he scouted. Uh, sometimes he was working with limited information, sure, but 
And these were these were always the incorrect calls. And that is definitely frustrating. Uh, these three marines are... Well, well, they're on a journey. Gonna take out one zealot. That's something. Might be capable of taking out a little bit more here as well. At least it's going to force a warp in defensively. Super frustrating if you're a toss and you have to deal with this. Here comes a worker pool. This is so annoying that beyond micros, like these three marines, you know, someone else sends them in. It's like, hey, I'm busy defending at home. He's like, no, actually, if I micro these marines forever, I can get four workers rather than just one. Despite me being up 30 workers, that's still important to me. And I mean, it, it didn't matter at all, but it's it's just cool, these, these small little things. The Showing that he's confident enough to, to micro at two locations like that, despite the only thing really mattering at this point is being the defense, of course. Like, yeah, GG gets called. Beyond ties up the series and we'll be going to the rubber match in this best of five. And here on Grass Fund, that final game uh, is going to be played. As we see this uh, probe making its way across the map. I like that classic throughout the series became more and more careful. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with confidence or perhaps just wants to play it safe. You know, that was his plan all along. But it is kind of funny. He started up with no scouting a couple of games and now he's been, uh, in, you know, gradually increasing the amount of scouting he's been doing. You know, even further around this base and going straight across the map. Sees that it indeed is going to be a CC on the low ground. Will not wait for the first unit to pop out and will not, as a result, get the info on whether this is a factory or a marine but it's uh, or a reaper. It's going to be marine into factory here with a near instant reactor after that marine pops and that's mainly because the marine got started a little bit later this guy he looks so cool wish i was a marine well i don't really wish i was a marine but i do think they look very cool yeah so so far every single time that beyond has opened up with this quick factory build he has tried going into the cyclone follow-up that could be possible here again now don't forget one time we've seen him we, we, we saw him start that cyclone and then basically stop the plan midway through and go for a double raven build let's see if that's going to be the case or no it's going to be a mine first so a complete switch up here stargate will be the tech of choice for classic so he'll remain consistent when it comes to that he had a pylon on the side stop any potential reapers from jumping in towards that uh well, this general area orbital is uh 75 done at this point i think this is the second mine here that is popping out matter of fact it's going to be a really quite a rapid mine drop interest to see where this is going to go double adapt into stalker with that battery up front this is the the way that classic wants to play he's been playing this very consistently repeatedly now this uh very similar opener needs to be careful does not want to lose any units here so i wonder if this is going to be a, a a double mine drop with marines or without marines but some marines are definitely moving over nope not gonna get picked up here we do see the swap so raven will be the first um tech lab unit here in this game so far we only had naked factory and uh, naked starboard units follow-up will be a tech lab on this uh on this fact as well this factory most likely for a tank could be a cyclone as the first unit but unlike pm for this to be a cyclone yeah it's gonna be a tank here so the double mind drop is heading in phoenixes are on the other side of the map this could turn quite sour here for classic as a result of that and indeed the first mine pops in will drop and an instant switch here on uh, all of these workers double umbro as well coming out it's going to delay uh, the return to mining for a little bit longer one more umbro is that going to be in time phoenixes are trying to hide will he get something oh another umbro as the medevac is being chased can we get one more on Burrow? nice retargeting here look how much mining time is being delayed out of beyond would you look at this we're just watching the first person of classic here this must be so darn frustrating just pull that one worker away holy crap dude man you don't want to give your your opponent the opportunity to retarget but he just stood there taking it holy crap um did end up killing the medevac i hope yes definitely did 
follow-up is going to be... Oh, he forgot to uh, descend over the barracks. So his stim is going to be delayed. Nice moves with the mines, but delayed stim as a result. It's going to be double tank, maybe even triple tank here before we get combat shield to start. eBay is on the way as well, which means that plus one should start. And indeed it does. Double tanks on the low ground, 48 workers to 45. No third base yet here for Classic, who's cutting into his worker count completely, most likely to afford this nexus over here. I am... I, yeah, I'm expecting a continued worker production from here on out. Although we do see a chrono on that Colossus. So I'm starting to, to doubt a little bit. There's two Phoenixes out. That's a low amount of Phoenixes. Not really enough to harass with. Not, not at least uh, as I'm aware. Where did that raven actually go? Do we still have it around somewhere? We should. Yeah, it's just chilling in the back. Chilling in the front seat. Chilling in the back seat. Gotta make my mind up. Where do I go with my raven? It's gonna move out now. And this is a... This is a fierce army. It really is. Raven is absolutely essential with this push. It is really the only thing keeping it together. There's going to be two Colossi out. Third one is being chronoed out. Don't think it's going to be out in time, though. Not a great mathematician. Uh, maybe 30 seconds. It's going to be quite close. It's going to be cutting it quite close. With tanks, you often want to engage pretty slow. Combat shield also not done once again. So really slow just on that combat shield every single game. Really do believe that to be a, a pretty big error, honestly. Triple tank sieging up. Oh, if he can if he can get that if he can if he can get this that would be huge where's the raven is it going to be capable of moving in position there we go double interference matrix here being cast super battery is active could still be targeted down by this tank but beyond is not realizing that a single shot away so much healing here being achieved with this super battery that was at a mere 22 hp left a single tank shot away from dying beyond gets completely clubbed over here gets butchered by this defensive force that Classic had set up. Yes, two Colossi couldn't fight, but fighting into a super battery with that limited amount of DPS is always going to be a mistake. I thought that when he jumped on top of that battery, life was going to be okay, but I couldn't be further from the truth. It was not okay at all. And now we have the counter attack here coming out of Classic. And I'm afraid as a Beyond fan, as a Beyond supporter, that this is going to be the end of our lovely Korean Terran player here. This mine is going to get targeted down. Uh, can we get a pick up? No, we don't even need to. There's an observer here still from earlier times. No prism though to help out. Good swipes on these SCVs, but I do believe we might be seeing a... No, actually, no, these Colossus are just gonna stay alive. Never mind. Easy hold there for Classic. GG gets called. Classic wins the game and thus wins this series with a 3-2 score really nice games great decision making i especially love the first two to three games uh, were probably some of my favorites that i've seen in a long time in this matchup just high level decision making good control overall solid stuff solid stuff indeed and uh, that my dear friends is going to be it for me today i hope you all did enjoy this series if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel don't forget to check out the new channel that i have created called harambo together with lambo um I'll have it linked in the description of this video. And if I don't, be sure to type it into the YouTube search bar. I'm sure you'll get there. All right. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye.